Welcome everybody to this Just Chatting podcast, part of the Nurse Chatting Network. My name is Nate. On this episode, I speak to Lena and Luca, a trans woman and trans man, who tell me their story. I hope you enjoy. So, I'm just going to dive in. Is that alright? Yeah, mm-hmm. sure. Okay. So, um, we have only just met, literally two minutes ago. In the corridor. <laughs> yeah, in the corridor, exactly, yeah. So, I, obviously this is going to be, you have to take it in turns to talk, but and I sent you some questions earlier on. Hopefully, you had a quick look at them. Hopefully, there won't be too many curveballs in there. Yeah. But um, can you tell me about yourself? You know, how old you are, where you're from, what you do for a living, those sorts of things. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm Luca. Uh, I'm 21, um, and I'm a student here at Exeter. Yeah. Um, I do classics and philosophy, which means if anyone asks me what job I want after university, you will just get no answer. <laughs> Um, <laughs> what about some answer? What are you looking for? Well, I've got sort of three options, which is um, crusty academic in a Scooby Doo film. Yeah, um, it's the best, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, disgruntled teacher who teaches people who don't want to learn about classics and or philosophy. Right. Yeah. Slightly um, step down. Okay. Yeah. 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 Or probably a librarian. Oh, there's nothing wrong with being a librarian. No, that's no, the there's not. No, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sort okay. of hoping to get into like museum curation. So okay. I guess that's the fourth option. Ah, okay. Um, cool. But. See how it's going so far. I'll do a panic masters and see where that leads me. <laughs> how are you, Lena? I'm Lena. I did do a philosophy degree a long time ago and did train to be a librarian, and now I work in quality assurance. See, so it leads nowhere. So <laughs> yeah, it goes places. You can take, see the world. <laughs> and where are you folks from originally? Um, I moved here from Brighton a little while ago. Okay. Um, and that was for your degree, was it? No, I moved here because me and my wife wanted somewhere that we could afford to live and Brighton isn't that place. Right, okay, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I, I mean, I live in Exeter currently because of university, but I, I, my family live on the Isle of Wight. Oh, wow. So. You're one of the few. <laughs> one of the, one about the four people who live there. Yeah. About three of them are sheep, so. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, let's dive straight in. Um, the, the question really, I think this, is, this opens it up, I think, and for, for why I'm talking to you guys. So mm. for the context of people listening, um, at work we, we were all in the same institution in, in some way or another. There was a newsletter that came through and there was this advert for this cafe, this sort of safe space. And I was like, huh, these people probably have a story to tell and I would like to talk to them. So this question is, how would you identify yourself and what does that mean to you? And I think that should open the floor up for you guys to just tell me about that really. Uh, I think it might be worth, like, if it's okay to talk, to just mention a little bit about the trans cow and yeah, what we were trying to like great yeah. idea. achieve. Because yeah. um, basically, it's something that um, I was really keen to set up after Trans Pride in Brighton mm. this year because I feel like a lot of the time we don't have a chance to talk, mm. um, and you know that can be really isolating. So we're looking for ways to sort of have more to talk to each other, have more time to talk to each other as like trans people. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's really sort of trying to build on that, um, and yeah, um, that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I mean, I, I know, I know Lena through um, the Trans Cafe. Yeah. Literally met like the first first time on that. Um, but <laughs> I, I personally identify as um, a dude, um, a man, one of the lads. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's. I mean, I, 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 I don't know if it's just because I study classics and literally I'm doing my dissertation on like gender and the gender stereotypes and stuff like that. I'm definitely not a stereotypical man, so right. I think being a man isn't really about like quote unquote being masculine or whatever because yeah. I'm not particularly that. But I think regardless, I still am one, right. which is strange. Like, um, as not to go off on a slight tangent because it's only like two minutes in. Um, but recently, I think just because of the way I look, um, I went to the student health center and they, I, I gave them my deed poll being like, ah, I've got my official name change, here you are. And they were like, ah, we'll put you down as MX Mix. And I'm just oh, like... That's not okay. Yeah, I was just kind of like, cool, I'm really glad you have that option, yeah. but... No. But did you yeah. read the deed poll? Yeah, 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 <laughs> did you read yeah. the document I just gave you? And they were like, but we're very trans friendly here, here you go. Yeah. You don't look very... We'll put you down as Mix. I'm like, cool. That was a problem I had. Thanks. Um, <laughs> A while ago with my um, payment and pension things, mm. um, they, you know, they contacted me, they sent all my letters through to Mr. 
and using my old name, which is not a legal name at all. And I said, well, can you not do that? And they said, OK, so what we're going to need to do is put you down as mooks, because that way it makes it clearer that you're a woman. As how opposed that, to, like, yeah, your actual does, title. Yeah, <laughs> yeah does that right? Make it clearer, do you think? Um, I feel like part of the problem we've got, and you know, it's interesting how you phrase the question about um, how we identify it as, because, you know, like, I am a woman yeah. who is trans, yeah. if that makes sense. And yeah. I'm very proud of being trans, but it doesn't take away from the fact, from my experiences as a woman. And I guess I'm. I guess I'm quite stereotypical as a woman. <laughs> you right. know, I don't get clocked that much right. walking around, so I guess I'm lucky in that respect. Um, so, yeah, I think it's important to sort of understand that we're, you know... I think what people often mi mix up is thinking that we want to be seen as um, trans first. Yeah. Um, and that can cause some problems for people... Mm. From a binary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like I it's like the whole thing about like, oh cis men can you know, they've started it, it I'm glad that it's happening. Like uh masculinity is much more lax than it was. So like, you know, so you get cis men wearing makeup and wearing dresses and stuff. And then mm. there's like as soon as a trans guy does it, they're just like, Oh, okay, so you're not really trans, are you? You're not really like a binary trans person. It's like, no, no, still am. Okay, yeah. backtrack for me. Sorry, like, yeah. Cis men. See, the, my, so, yes. my, uh, you're gonna have to accept and um, of course. let me apologise to you. <laughs> because I'm, I'm ignorant, but it doesn't mean I'm unaccepting. No, so of course. that's what all I am. And I, yeah. and I think that that's what I'd like this conversation to be, so that I learn and perhaps some people can learn as well at the same time. So cis man, start a, with that a, one. So a cis man is a cisgender man. Okay. Um, uh, basically, it's not, a, it's not like a, 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 a nickname or slur or anything. It's okay. just it, all it literally means is a man who, like, was you know when you, the baby comes out and the doctor looks at it and looks at all its parts and it goes ah oh, this is a man yeah. that that baby has then grown up and decided to stay being a man okay whereas like it's like the opposite of transgender so you've okay. got like mm. transgender people people who decide they identify differently yeah. cisgender people people who don't okay so it's it's very I think there's a kind of misconception because people are like oh you're calling me cisgender that's not and it's like no it just means it's fine it's just a term yeah yeah <laughs> it's not like a bad thing it's just like it's what you are yeah so. And when we talked about binary and non-binary, um, so I'm binary. Um, you're, I think, binary. Like you, is when you identify as a man or a woman. Yeah. Um, whereas some people don't, for whatever reason, feel the need to do that, or don't feel that they can do that. Yeah. Um, and that's fine. And they're more likely to use things like they them pronouns or use the MX as a honorific because it makes it clearer mm. okay so are. there is a place for that yes you're saying oh, yeah. this, so, because that's what I'm trying to get to with that, with that, was, that feels like some, they were without trying to offending you yeah. no and, and, that, and they were but then but that, was that just ignorance or actually no there is a, there is a, a place for that no there is a sorry I didn't mean to way. interrupt um, no, there is a there is a place for that I think and I, I don't get me wrong I wasn't really offended I was really happy that they had that option yeah it's mm -hmm. just more just kind of peeved off that they didn't read the document I yeah, gave them. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, there is an option uh, for that. So, you know, non-binary people, it's kind of like, if you think of like the whole spectrum, you know, most times it's depicted as like pink, going into purplish, going into blue. Yeah. Um, people who are binary might be on like, you know, just in the pink or just in the blue. And then you've got like the non-binary people who are maybe like outside of it or some of the purplier colours or okay. I think it's at least a visual way of yeah, yeah, trying yeah. to explain it because I'm bad with words no, so I, 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 really person. <laughs> I, I prefer a picture yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay cool oh, well, I mean that's really good good foundation sure. yeah <laughs> so like I'm really I'm really interested now Now we've like got a little bit of that out of the way like, about you guys uh, so, excuse the term you guys that's just my you know slang <laughs> relax you're uh, good it's fine <laughs> But I don't want. I don't want. I don't want to say anything that might cause offence because of my ignorance. So I, I, go on, you say something. I feel like um, part of the one of the really difficult things I think for cis people in this conversation is that desire not to cause offence. Sure. Okay. Because like most of the time, I feel like we're not we're not like sitting here trying to be, find things to be offended of. We're quite happy to of like. Course. I, I'm quite happy to answer questions. I'm quite mm. happy to like hey, talk to people who get things wrong. Sometimes I might say, 
actually, you know, don't yeah. ever call a trans woman a guy. <laughs> you yeah, know, just yeah. just don't do that. Yeah, like, sure. <laughs> um, but you know, it, it, as long as you know, I feel like we have to be able to have that conversation. Yeah. yeah so yeah, that's really important. The, 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 at least the channel is open to have that. Yeah. Conversation. Yeah. It's like yeah. not not everyone wants to. I mean, some people like conflict and I, I personally don't no. <laughs> uh, but it's like you know we can't speak for every trans person so it's no, like, yeah. just in the same way like no, I think people too. are very scared of being wrong as well which I think is into that. like it's fine it, it's cool and I guess yeah. people are scared of being wrong in all walks of life yeah and exactly it's just, there's a certain amount, amount of unknown perhaps that mm. you know I, I don't want to walk into a room where there's a meeting and say something stupid about some you know IT person yeah. or something <laughs> and like I'm an idiot <laughs> so there's the same sort of thing but it's just a bit more of an unknown mm. perhaps um, what I am really interested in, though, is your individual stories about you know, how you got to be where you are now, and what was that like um, in what, I don't know, to be to say, previous life? <laughs> how does that work? I Tell died and that. came back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I would, say, I would say that about, like, uh, I, I got a, a new job. Well, that was me in my previous life. Yeah, yeah, so it's fair enough. It's a, yeah. it's a, a, a turn of phrase, but that interests me, and, and, and how, that, how you feel about that. Um, well, I guess of the two of us, I came out probably later in life. I'm 33 now, uh, and I came out when I was getting to my, getting towards 30. Right. Um, do you know? Do you watch The Good Place? Uh, I have seen the first two seasons. <laughs> ah, I had a dream where Michael from The Good Place told me that I was a trans woman. Right. And I was like, okay, I'm I'm not going to disagree. Of that, so I changed my life, and <laughs> <laughs> there was a little bit more to it than that. But that was more, like okay, my. What more is that? that was, me, yeah, okay. Well, I guess what it was was that it was that sort of. I spent a lot of time at around that time thinking about like because Halloween was coming up. I'd never dressed as a woman, yeah, and I re- had always felt that that was something that I should do. Okay, um, but I was always very frightened to because um, of how would I ever go back. Um, and it was at this point where I was thinking about doing that and then I had this dream and it was about like you have to it's about not putting on a costume and that's where you'll get it's where you're thinking wrongly you want to be taking off the co- the man costume yeah um, and yeah um, there was a couple of months where I was thinking about this in my own home and sort of there's this really awkward patch where you're sort of just cross-dressing at weekends <laughs> and it feels really sordid because that's how our society tells us to feel about that yeah. happens to the best of us it's fine <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but when you say in your home so you mentioned very briefly earlier you have a wife yeah so how long have you been married uh, i got married in 2016 we've been together for eight nine years now okay so that so you were married before you transitioned yeah okay, so um how did that conversation go um i walked down the stairs in a skirt and I said this is something I've been thinking about and she said it's just clothes Hmm. Um, which was good in a way it gave me a lot of um, license to think about it but also for me it was about something else other than clothes and yeah for a long time I had to think about what that actually meant to me and it was quite difficult because you go through like this stage of like using they, them pronouns and just trying to like, well, for me, that was like a stepping point of like, I don't want to be a man, but I don't feel like a woman. Sure. Um, and then it's sort of, towards the end of that, I, I was realizing that actually I, I do want to be a woman and this is who I am. Mm. Um, so I, you know, I did the usual thing of like bringing cake into work and sending out an email beforehand saying, I'm changing my gender. Mm. <laughs> And um, especially after that, things got a lot easier with my wife because she sort of, as soon as she knew where she stood, right. it got easier. Okay. Um, still challenging, and it's really hard. I, I feel for people who are married to a trans person, there's a real, like, it, it's a really big issue. It's a real sort of um, mindfuck about who you are. Yeah. Um, I don't know, should I be swearing? You can say that? whatever you Thank like. You. <laughs> So, <laughs> so yeah it was really I feel like it was really hard for her um, and I've been very lucky that she's wanted to stay with me sure. um, I feel like that 
I've always been very clear to her that that's not something that I expected that she would do. Yeah. Um, and I would understand it if she didn't want to. And thankfully, she's been, she's she's stayed with me, which Pre is nice. Presumably, from her point of view, you're still the same person. You've just realised something about yourself. That sounds more like the reality of the situation. So, is that would that is that fair to say? Um, I think it can feel bits of both because I feel like who you are, how your personality is can change quite a lot when you're coming out mm -hmm. um, and it, I feel like there were times when she was like where is this quiet, shy guy I married Yeah, like, I'm not that quiet now yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so she's had a learning curve about who I am I think that she likes who I am, which is good yeah. so it's it was a challenge for us both um, I think if I was single now, I wouldn't be looking to date a cis person because, you know, they get have a lot of baggage about gender. And <laughs> but, you know, I've been very lucky that she's been with with me through it, and we've come out the other side of a difficult thing. <laughs> Sounds like a little perfect story, to be honest. With you. Yes, it's I'm not. Sure it's not been. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's been challenging for us both, I yeah. think, um, and it's been we've been really lucky that you know we're still compatible yeah which makes it possible for her to live our lives yeah. and yeah how about, how about you Lucy? um well i i came out officially uh literally as i came into university i knew for a good couple of years but i didn't come out until um until ooh, when when was what's the I mean, I'm in my third year now, so yeah, sure. presumably three years ago. Yeah, presumably. Um, I, I have the sort of... I mean, I, 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 I did a sort of similar thing, you know, when you bring in cake and you try and soften the blow, <laughs> except um, I can't take anything seriously in life, um, my, my greatest flaw. And so I bought two cards. Um, you know, the... You know the okay, this makes this is really funny to me, but I understand <laughs> if it's not funny to anyone else because okay. I'm not a funny person. You know those cards you get, you know, when someone has a baby, yeah, and it's like it's a boy. Yeah. So I bought two of those and I wrote one to my mum and my one to my dad and one to my dad and was just like, it's a twenty years later, a boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. So thank you. I thought so too. I was very pleased with myself. Um, and so I, I sort of, as as my mum was dropping me off, I gave one to her and sort of. I, I don't like doing things in person. I specifically wrote in the card, I wrote, please do not phone me about this. Right. Either give me like a day or so, yeah. and then we can talk in person, or text me. First thing she did was call me. Of course. Oh. So, yeah. Yeah. And how yeah. was that conversation? It, she's a difficult person. Um, I think she's the sort of person who very much wants to be supportive, but is so intent on being supportive that she's actually very not supportive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like when, so I uh, was questioning, you know, sexuality, gender from about being 14, 15. Yeah. Um, and she knew that something was up. And I'm very much the type of person who I just need to be left alone for like a little bit of time. I'll come to terms with it by myself. If I need to talk about it, I will. But if not, I'm happy just like sorting through my problems through like you know into in in, in, yeah, a, in a reflection yeah. internally yeah. yeah um she would periodically sit me down on the couch and force me to talk about things which yeah. i would then awkwardly avoid and then yeah. never talk to her and it was it was quite a strain on our relationship for a uh, a few years and if it makes you feel any better that sounds like a classic mum yeah I no I'm not like yeah. <laughs> it's, I'm not, it's not I don't think it's a her thing I think it's just a mum thing yeah. um, so I'm not too upset about it um, it's still I, I was never particularly I'm, I, I mean I'm, I'm not even now particularly close to her because uh, I, will, I mean <laughs> she wanted a daughter for one and out of four children I was right. the only one. And so, you know, she gave me the, the name she always wanted and was like, oh, we're going to have... She wanted a very st stereotypical girly daughter. Yeah. Um, and then, like, I'm here. <laughs> so... Your hands, are, yeah, I, I want to say, ta-da! Yeah! Like, like, <laughs> ta-da! <laughs> yeah. Jazz hands. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, and I think for ages I was, like, very scared of my femininity because, like I said earlier, I'm not a very st stereotypical guy. Like, I like sort of, like, the, the nerdy interests and everything, but I also like painting my nails and yeah. doing my hair and stuff. And I think I strayed away from that for ages, which is very particular with my mum because then she was, like, 
well, you don't want to do any of these like girly things with me, so we can't bond at all. Yeah. Um, and so my, my dad, my dad was much easier. My dad's very chill. He um, he has a transgender sister actually who came out in her like her fifties, so he's kind of used to it. He oh, was right. a lot. Um, so uh, do you think either of them knew before you? Um, I think. Well, uh, maybe, maybe my mum, just because she likes to think she knows things. Right. So as a child, I used to be very obsessed with Thomas the Tank Engine. Um, and who, who wasn't? Uh, exactly, was right? It's she fantastic. Was. Really weird if you think about it, but that's another podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> don't, don't, so don't when I first met you... Like, no, no children's TV show no, should question it. I just went off about Scooby-Doo for like a good half hour when we first met. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Another podcast. <laughs> um, but I used to... And also, I was obsessed with my older, my older brother. I used to like want to dress like him and everything. And so for, for I think, a good couple of months, um, I would only respond to Edward, and I was a train... And then my mother, literally, in one of the texts she sent after me, uh, after I'd come out to her, she said to me, was like, actually, looking back, <laughs> <You're> right, <yeah. laughs> it's not really yeah. surprising, I mean. <laughs> so. That's a really, that's sort of question that hadn't even occurred to me. Um, how do you go about choosing your names when you transition? Oh, no, not this story. I, for me, it was, um, Selena was a name, is a name of a Greek goddess mm-hmm. connected to dreams, Dreams have been really important to me, yeah. um, so I chose that name because of that. I also chose the names. Um, my, I've got my two middle names are Molly Rose, which Molly's because they were 18th century um, trans people and often prostitutes who were like a, one of the earliest groups of trans people in our society, mm. um, and Rose because of my wife's mum. Um, and that unfortunately gave me the initials MR, which now I get my letters to. Oh no. Selena oh, <laughs> MR, and I'm just like. Yeah. Just yeah. switch the order, maybe. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. I'm really bad at choosing names. That's, That's why I live there. <laughs> um, mine is infinitely more embarrassing, don't worry. Um, so if anyone asks officially, this is the story I told my grandmother. The name Luca came from my um, Italian ancestors. Right. It is because uh, someone I knew had a really good dog. Wow. Called Luca. <laughs> Didn't even like the person that much. Did really like the dog. I was yeah. like, yeah. I'm going to keep this in mind. Yeah, that's cool. Well, you know, um, more important than anything. Yeah, yeah, it was... It's like in a movie when, like, yeah. <laughs> ten people die. Like, no, don't hurt the dog. No, <laughs> no, I was, exactly. really like this dog. It was between that and Lysander because... Um, Midsummer Night's Dream is one of my like favorite things, okay. like one of my favorite Shakespeare plays, and then I was just like, ah, oh, I kind of like the dog too. Yeah. <laughs> so, Nina, you didn't you didn't mention your parents at all. How how was that uh, conversation? Um, they be they are quite religious. I was home educated to um, you know, to avoid some influences. Right. We say, um, so it was an interesting thing coming out to them because I basically didn't know how they would respond at all. Yeah. Um, I came out to my sister first because of that reason, like, get get the sister on side yes. and then everything goes better. Yeah, and that, and your sister was on side? Oh, yeah, straight away, yeah. straight away. And again, do you think your sister knew before you did? I don't think it's... I feel like it's difficult... I, it's often, like... I don't know that there are actual tells, okay. to be honest with you, because um, a lot of the time people who come out, like, uh, you know, you see the sort of before and after pictures of burly bikers who sure. then, like, because a lot of the time you're just sort of, you um, deny, you right. go into denial. So you've gone like, the, like, so far the other way almost. Yeah, right. I mean, like, how I never went to um i never did any cross-dressing yeah i very rarely did costumes because that was too that was a bit too real for me so like i feel like often it's difficult and then only afterwards you can then say actually that was kind of obvious wasn't it right. like, looking back you're just like yeah oh that explains so much yeah <laughs> so. <laughs> so. so so you got your sister on side yeah um, so I got my sister on side. I did. I came out to them, and they took it pretty well. They're still struggling a bit. Yeah. Um, probably shouldn't say this on a podcast. <laughs> my dad's getting old now, and sometimes he struggles to remember things in general. Yeah. So, like, you know, he'll struggle. He'll say things like, 
um, he'll talk about Ronald Reagan being president, right. things like that. Okay. So he does often get my pronouns wrong, yeah. but in a way, I can't really, you know, I don't really hold that against him because yeah. this, you know, yeah. it's it's a tricky little one, you yeah. know. He does, he, I don't think he means any harm by it. So you yeah. sort of have to get on with life sometimes. So do you, do you do either of you ever get called by your previous names? By um, anyone, family. Friends. Yeah, uh, I, I, I think a, a couple of friends still call me by my own, I, which is strange because I, I went by a nickname. I never went by my like okay. old name, but even the nickname is I still get called just because. And to be fair, I don't mind it because again, it's like it's not the. It, there's kind of a difference between like malicious misgendering yeah, yeah. And, and just like doing it by mistake. Like I do it to myself sometimes. I, I yeah. have dreams where I, my my friend found it really interesting that sometimes I have dreams and I'm still a girl in them. Yeah. So it's like it's just like sometimes you you have a brain fart and yeah yeah of course things happen. So that's not something that you that you have ever felt. You know, you wanted to say no, no, no you need to get it right, or you, you're okay with it, or is, is it when you f- sense that malice? Is that what you're saying? I guess I'm really not okay with it. To yeah, be honest yeah. with you, like um, it's quite nice now that people don't know my name from before yeah. and that I'm dealing with people who just see me as who I am and yeah. not the baggage that is connected there. Mm. Yeah. I suppose people people deal with it differently, don't they? Because like, I'm, mm. I'm a very non-confrontational person, whereas I feel like if I was a confrontational person, I'd probably be a bit more, you know, like, actually, you need to yeah. get this right. But because I'm, I, I'm not, I'm just kind of like, eh, it's fine. Like, But does I, that mean you're actually still feeling it, though? You're I still mean, feeling like, oh, come on, get it right. In an ideal world, yes, mm-hmm. but I'm also just like, I've got, so, <laughs> I'm a third year uni student, I've got like two jobs, I don't have time to worry <laughs> about that. <laughs> I'm like, as long funny. as you're not like out to get me, yeah, <laughs> I've got yeah. other things to worry about. And I think that's what I was trying to get down, get to the point of, is that, we were obviously talking earlier about the sort of unknowns and that fear of it, that mm. quite often it's not someone out to get you, it's someone perhaps making a mistake. Mm. Um, but I can see that mm. what you're saying there about, it's nice to be known just as you are. You know, so. Yeah, I guess it would be pretty hard for, just because of the nature of the fact that I've moved to Devon quite recently and like I've changed jobs a couple of times, it would be quite, it would take a level of research for somebody to accidentally call me my old name. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's... so, and I do think there's, it's something I've heard, I don't know if you feel this is true, but some people have said to me that like trans, uh, trans women are more likely to maybe take offence because there's maybe more of a danger if we get I'd plot. say that, yeah. I, I think, you know, I, I think at the best times I look like a butch lesbian, um, which is not great, but it's <laughs> better than being like a, 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 a cis straight girl, I suppose. Hang on, <laughs> can, come back on something for me. Talk to me about that danger. Oh, well, I mean, there's quite a lot of... Um, there's quite a lot of discrimination against trans people at the moment, um, particularly um, from these people who like to call themselves um, trans exclusionary radical feminists. Yeah, trans exclusionary radical feminists. Turfs. Turfs. Yeah. 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 There we go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so basically, they're um, they're causing a lot of trouble for trans women, mm. especially um, with trans men. It almost feels like um, trans women get to be like these monsters who are like invading women's spaces for sexual thrills okay. um, whereas trans men are more sort of ignored yeah <laughs> it, we're either ignored or we're like oh you're confused it's fine don't worry you will you will still you know become a woman it's fine whereas like trans women I found they're very much like these these men they're coming here and they're taking our okay. female pronouns yeah <laughs> there's only a few of them to go there's around. only a few you've got to Limited supplies, you yeah, know. Exactly, yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel like there is there's, there's more of a, a, a threat. I suppose I don't know if it comes from. I've heard some sort of gender theorists say that it's because um, because like trans women are AMAB uh, assigned male at birth. Yeah. Um, there's still like, the whole um, kind of like dangerous man sort of okay. initial kind of like. That, am I making any sense? I'm looking at you here. <laughs> like uh, people, whereas we, with, with women, because so, you know, society, women are overlooked slightly. So for a trans man, 
it's just like, oh yeah, but you'll, you'll revert back to being a woman, it's fine. Whereas with, tra- well, with trans women, it's kind of like, no, you are a dangerous man, you, right. you must stop. Um, I think, I, I, I'm not a gender theorist. I, <laughs> I Google some own research Luca, on that. My favourite thing about this is that you are stumbling over things like I did at the beginning of this conversation. Yeah, this so is that's the thing. That's my it's favourite thing. No one I'm knows shit. <laughs> like, right. People are like, oh, tell us about your transition. I don't know. I woke up one day and Michael from The Good Place told me. <laughs> <laughs> no one knows anything. Gender is bullshit. Yeah. We're all yeah. confused. I kind, yeah, of feel like, I kind of feel like, um, especially for trans men, it's like the sexism gets you coming and going. Because... Mm. Um, if a tr- if a turf saw you now, they'd be like, "There's this dangerous man who's become who's saying that he's a woman," <laughs> <laughs> and that has happened lots of times. Whereas I, but if they know that you're a woman, they'll be like, or if they know that you were born a woman, mm. they'll be like, "Oh, she's confused." Yeah, it's and it's like, like they don't treat. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like a. They, they like to distinguish it a lot where it's just, just like no just let people live their lives yeah <laughs> so have you got have you guys so, sorry it's that phrase again <laughs> have either of you encountered abuse in 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 recent years yeah yeah <laughs> it's how does that what does that manifest as it was one of the most affirming things early on in my transition that one of my old friends from Brighton got in touch with me and um, the first thing he said was, I don't want to talk to you about gender if it's going to upset you. And I said, thank you for that, because I've just come out. And I was just about writing to him, thank you, but I've just come out. This is a really hard thing. And before I had the time to finish writing that, he'd already sent me like four messages right. detailing what he thought womanhood was and all of this stuff. And I'm like, I'm having womanhood explained to me by a guy in a really <laughs> aggressive voice. Mm-hmm. This is a legitimate female experience. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You've got it. <laughs> You get, your, you get your, your, your woman card in the mail the next day. Right. <laughs> Even that Go patriarchy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm, that sounds... So, I, yeah, I see you've, you've spun that in a way that makes it a positive for you, but clearly that must have been disturbing in some way. I spent a long time crying that day. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it is tough sometimes that, like, you do face... Or I face that. Like, mostly I don't, because I kind of... I live in Tynmouth. People don't really know about trans issues there. Right. Um, occasionally, like the other day, I had something, had some people shouting at me in the street, and that was then like, then I clocked danger. Right. Um, but mostly it's like, mostly I get cat calls. Right. So, which is another form of danger because then you're like, you know, yeah. The, if they if they cat call you and then they realise then. You've just been deceiving. Right. Okay. <laughs> right. It's like the danger of either being a woman or being a trans woman. You've got <laughs> rock and a hard place. Have you, have you ever responded to any of the, those people? Like, have you, you know, verbally or, or over text or anything like that? Has any, have you ever... How do you, how do you react to that? That's what I'm, I'm getting at. Uh, I used to get really stuck into arguing with people and these days I kind of don't. Because yeah. I feel like that's not the conversation that we need to be having. Mm, and it probably only hurts you as well. Yeah, I mean, I'll do it if I think that the person is really dumb and they'll waste their mental energy arguing with me, whereas I can just send off a two-second thing. Right. But otherwise, I don't bother. Mm. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I mean, um, I, most of mine, unsurprisingly, have also been from from men <laughs> clocking and then I, I've had quite a number of times where um, I've been kicked out of bathrooms or ganged up on in male bathrooms in particular most of the times it's like on nights out so right. it's sort of I'm drunk and emotional they're drunk and angry <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. so which is strange because when I'm by myself I will just instantly break down into tears right. not that just uh, both because I'm if, if I'm drunk that happens right. it's inevitable yeah, yeah. Um, but I remember one time I had, I was uh, going into the bathroom with a, a friend of mine who is also a trans guy, um, and they were kind of ganging up on both of us for a while. He was in the toilet. I remember just standing there like, if I'm going to get beaten up, oh, it's going to be for my friend. So there was this kind of like <laughs> drunken cockiness yeah. where um, I'll, I'll try my best to stand up to them, mm-hmm. but most times it just sort of culminates in them ganging up and 
I get kicked out of the bathroom and start crying. Bouncer comes, either they're really nice or they also join in and help kick me out of the bathroom. Yeah. Um, like, okay, so without trying to put a spin on anything, because I, I don't I want to talk it as things are rather than mm-hmm. you want them to be, have you had positive experiences though? That's, that's kind of, that's what something I, I, this feels like we're sort of going down a road of a lot of this is negativity. But do you find there are positive experiences in your life from this? Is there, is there anything that's overtly positive or do you take any positive from stuff that's not overt perhaps? Hmm. I think that, <laughs> I mean, it, it, what's hard to say is what, what life would have been like if I wasn't trans because it's not like it's something that I woke up and decided, although that's exactly what I said I did. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but like, but actually, it sounds like you didn't have a choice. Yeah, no. Michael told me. Yes. Michael, exactly. Um, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I had to. I, it's something that I had to do in order to stop thinking about it every day. Yeah. Um, so just like being, uh, being in a freer place, things that have changed for me is I'm more confident. Yeah. Um, my depression is a lot better, and like. Um, I don't know, like when I went to Trans Pride this year, there were like 8,000 trans people and suddenly you're not in the minority mm-hmm. and suddenly like everything is possible and it is just like the most amazing feeling and also like meeting people like Luca from oh, Transcurf. Please con- continue complimenting me. <laughs> yeah. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, there have been some positive things. I mean, I suppose it, there's a difference between the positive experiences that have come from, you know, like you said, like feeling better about yourself, feeling more confident, mm-hmm. and then also the experiences where someone, you know, might when someone does does call me a man or something, you know, they're, they're happy experiences. But then I also I think being open at openly trans, like I'm I, as far as I'm aware the only trans person at my work, yeah. um, and I like to joke that the only reason they hired me was they could take a diverse like <laughs> diversity quota, but jokes on them I get like nine quid an hour, yeah. so. <laughs> Um, so I'm happy to be the token trans in that case, but um, I, I just remember, I, I won't say any names or anything just in case they hear this, mm-hmm. um, but I had a co-worker who's, who their, one of their children had recently come out as trans, and so they came to me and um, asked me how they can best support them. Yeah. And it was, it was a strange situation because it was, it, obviously again, like I said, I can only speak for myself. I can't, I can't even speak for all trans men. Yeah. I can only speak for my own experiences. Um, so I, I didn't know how I could best help her, but it was just very touching that she sort of thought, okay, I'm clearly out of my my league here. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go to the person who knows best, and it was yeah. a, it was a very touching moment as well because I just thought like my 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 mum I don't think ever would have done anything like that. So to know that 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 someone out there, another young trans person out there, that is happening, it was quite a positive, happy moment. So but I sort of but more more than just. Um, here's someone who might who knows about it. Here's someone that I respect to ask. Yeah, and yeah. That seems important. It was it was a very nice moment. We sort of bonded. Well, you know, I I didn't I didn't know I don't, didn't know her that well. I still don't. But you know, I sort of yeah. even then I gave her my number and was like, if you ever need anything, like yeah. you know, if you ever need to ask advice or questions, yeah. um, I'm happy to. Because just the fact I literally I said to her I was like the fact that you whether or not I can help the fact that you actually came and asked yeah. is means more than anything cuz like if there's so many people out there who would appreciate having someone in that like that in their life who would well, well did you did you folks have have that situation um did you have anyone to turn to I have a small group of people who all post on a sa- on the same sort of alternate history website yeah. um and there's a lot of alternate history people who are trans right um we like talking about what ifs. <laughs> um, so I had that, and that was really valuable early on. Early on, yeah. Um, I feel like that was my main like connection. I'd like my my memory of being like in university was we only had one trans person in the in the university, right? And that was you know there was no like that was at such a hard position for them to be in. Um, and now it feels like there's more people, <laughs> definitely. Did you meet any of those people in person, or was that purely online? Well, we we've met quite a few times yeah. now, actually, um, and that's really nice because I I feel like part of the thing, like Luca was saying, part of the advantage of being trans is being able to help other trans people. Yeah. 
Um, and yeah, when you sort of get to do that, it's a real blessing. Mm. Um, and also just like, it's, yeah, it's important. It's like, mm. gives you a sense of like solidarity. And yeah, shit. it's kind of a, a beautiful, tragic understanding that life sucks for us trans folks. <laughs> so the least we can do is make it better for each other. Yeah. I guess, the, so the, a couple of questions really sort of finishing up from, I emailed these out to you guys this morning and um, Luke, you came back with, and asked about this one, you know, what are your hopes for the future? And I meant that very much however you wanted to interpret it. But you had, you were like, does, does that mean for me? Does that mean <laughs> for the trans community? I mean, what, tell me, what are, what, are you, what are your hopes for the future? Um, I want to grow a beard. <laughs> I shaved for the, I know, sorry. I bring this up because um, I shaved for the first time yesterday. <laughs> Amazing. Um, it was very bad. I don't know if you can notice all the little red spots. Okay. But that, those were bleeding very badly. <laughs> um, but my goal, and I told one of my co-workers this, uh, when I first started testosterone, um, I said, if I have a beard by Christmas, you can put glitter in it. Amazing. Um, and you can hang little tiny baubles on it. I just want to be able to grow a beard just, just so she can have the joy of doing that. <laughs> and also for me. I feel bad because I've shaved my beard off for yeah. November. So I would have been beard <laughs> When I say beard. I had to shave, I mean I had like a few straggly hairs yeah, here. Yeah, but sure. I was just like, you know what? This counts. I'm taking it as a win. Go for it. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's your hopes for the future. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Well, okay. Um, let's get a bit deeper. What, why is that? Why, what, what does that mean to you? Um, I mean, partly I think it's just because I, 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 I know that I appear very feminine, so if I have something like, something very obvious, very, like, I am a man, mm -hmm. like, in t until people, until it gets to the point in time where people are, are more, are, are less likely to, to judge people based on their outward appearance, okay. I feel like I might need that necessarily, aside from, like, wearing a big t-shirt that says, I'm a dude, please, please <laughs> use he, him. If I just had a beard, yeah. people would, like, automatically assume maybe I'm just a cis guy who likes wearing makeup. Um... But I think also a slightly pettier reason is that none of the men in my family are very good at growing beards. And if I can grow the best one out of all of them, <laughs> I will be set for life. Yeah, okay, fair enough. The cool. amount of blackmail at Christmas. Oh, beautiful. Have it easy. <laughs> so I want equality for everyone, please. Okay. <laughs> That's very much one for so, you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like, one of the lovely things about working in a university is you know, having a memory of what things were like 15 years ago when, mm. like, being who I am now would be impossible. Mm. And then seeing people who are younger than me who are growing up with that... Like, the first time I met trans people who are studying here, it just felt like I'm looking at, like, some kind of superhumans. Mm. They're, like, they're going to have opportunities that mm. I didn't have, and they're going to have opportunities that no one's had before, and mm. that's... And it's still not perfect. I'm really confident for the next generation, though. It's, is it? I, I would hope that it's slightly heartening that 15 years doesn't sound like a long time to me. I mean, it sounds like a long time, but for change, that doesn't sound like a long time. So much has changed so quickly. Yeah, like, it's getting faster as well. I feel. Yeah. Yeah, like 2016 was when I really started thinking about this because that was when it started feeling possible. Yeah. Um, and I just really, yeah, I, I feel really hopeful that, like, we can get to a stage where if someone says my pronouns are him, him, we'll just say, okay, he, him. Mm. And, like, the people will, will understand what non-binary is mm. um, and treat that with respect. And then we can sort of get to a stage where people don't judge people based on how they look. And we can sort of... Actually, the thing that I really want to be is... Um, one of those stereotypical like I want to be I want to have white woman privilege <laughs> and just want to talk to people's manager and just like people to say oh white women you to have the, <laughs> the typical haircut as well yeah yeah it's like, it's like Karen is it the internet calls it Karen, Karen. Yeah. oh yeah, yeah. 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 it'll be yeah. Karen yeah. <laughs> I absolutely want that and I just like transness to be so much of not an issue yeah. that I can that you know, we can just sort of put that to bed and I can just be um, overly privileged. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Fair <laughs> okay, last question. Most important question. Question I ask everyone on these interviews, okay? It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what we're talking about, it doesn't matter what the, the hook of the, of the of thing is. It's always this question because I think there's not enough of this in the world. 
So what brings you great joy? Okay, you know when really fat cats run up to you from afar oh, yeah. and their tails are up and their butts wiggling? Yeah. That or when cats have ID cards for like jobs. Like there was one in Iceland who had a little photo and an ID card that said mouse keeping. That's amazing. Oh, it was beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Was, yeah, cats. just... I mean, I, yeah, I've got two. Once okay. They're named after detectives. They can't solve crimes. They are stupid. Which detectives? Uh, Inspector Cluzo and Nancy Drew. <laughs> <laughs> of all the detectives? Uh, yeah. Cluzo, really? Well, it's because I had another cat called Cato who unfortunately died. And uh, we got... Well, when Cato was alive, um, he was quite lonely. And so we, we got Cluzo right, as... Okay. Um, and I think I think it's like that. Cato like is Cluzo's yeah, um, yeah. like manservant or yes, something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so we were like, oh, cool. So we'll have Cato and Cluzo. And yeah. then Cato died, and we were like, well, we've got Inspector Cluzo now. I guess we better carry on the theme with yeah. Nancy Drew. So fair enough, cats. Fair enough. Yeah, cool. Lena, how about you? I think the thing that's bringing me most joy, the thing that's keeping me sane in this world of darkness, is um, Star Trek. Oh my god, yes. It's so good at the moment. I'm watching the original series and just the outfits. Oh my god, I... it's <laughs> different podcast, but we could go oh on. Oh my god. And the lighting is you fantastic. Need to listen to my other podcast. <laughs> Star Trek. Over here. Right I've over been here. watching Next Generation recently and oh, the acting. Oh my I god. love it. I can't well, I haven't got to that one yet. Although I don't have my glasses at the moment, so I can't see very well. And I feel like because it's all beige, that's a good <laughs> yeah. one to watch about having to see it. Yeah. I mean, what's your, what, which is your favourite Star Trek? Uh, Kirk is my favourite of all time, uh, but I get ridiculed by my other uh, podcasters because clearly Picard is the best. Which I mean, they, what are they talking about? Uh, well, they're right, first of all. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be Cisco. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Picard is so boring. He looks like an egg. It's great. <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> so does Cisco. <laughs> but I mean, it's not Patrick Stewart. <laughs> Only from season three. Season two, one and two, he had hair. I always forget that. Yeah. <laughs> He's not a true egg. He's not. Yeah. yeah. Although I must admit, now I'm watching Kirk, there's, there's, there's strong energy there. Yeah. I mean, he is, yeah. he's pretty hot in the original series. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, we can talk about that for a long <laughs> <Okay>. time. <laughs> you you both okay in my books. Yeah. <laughs> right, well, before we finish up, is there anything else that you had, had thought you wanted to say or anything you, 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 you wanted to bring to the world that has come up since we've been talking and I've stopped you from talking? There's one thing, yes. and that's um, people who are thinking of transitioning often feel like it's taking on a selfish act and that they, they're doing something for me that will hurt those around them. And I think one of the most important things I've learned through transitioning is that actually it gives you an opportunity to help other people yeah. and that um, it, that's an incredible blessing and it's not selfishness, it's building something for the world making things better for other people so um, if you're listening to this and you want to transition you know get on that what do you <laughs> and, and what's what's wrong about like taking care of yourself I think a lot of times yeah. we, we, we lose sight of that one of the reasons why I'm doing November is you need to have some mental health awareness and be good to yourself sometimes um, yeah yeah um, I suppose as well like even if I, I just just uh, I don't want to bring up a whole other topic of like detransition, um, but I think the reason a lot of people are scared to question their gender is because what if they're not? Yeah. And like again, if you're out there listening to this, that's fine. If you're not, yeah. that's cool. You thought about it. It's like I thought I liked Brussels sprouts for a while, and then I didn't. But then my grandma cooked them with like bacon and like cream and nuts and everything, and I was like, actually, these are pretty rad. Yeah. <laughs> Being transgender just like Brussels sprouts. Basically, it's fine if you think you are. It's fine if you think you're not. You're allowed to take time for yourself to question that. And even if even if you're wrong, that's still cool. You still thought about it. But it's just more than you know a lot of a lot of people do. Yeah. So brilliant. Thank you both so Thank much. You. This has been an absolute pleasure. Oh. Um, and I hope that we stay in touch. <laughs> um, yeah. Thanks very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye.